Hey, good morning, YouTube. So today, what I'm going to be looking at or working on uh, is this Milwaukee M12 Dremel. Uh, this thing, I've used it pretty hard. Uh, it, it's led a rough life, um, and now what it's doing is every time I go to use it, these uh, little battery indicator lights, all four of them flash uh, three times and turn off, and the tool uh, never engages. Um, initially, I thought this was a temperature problem. Some of these uh, M12 and the fuel tools, uh, if the temperature uh, pin, detection pin up here in the tool and in the battery, if either one of them become corroded, uh, the tool will not run because it can't determine the temperature of the battery pack. Um, this is not that. Uh, if you look at some other videos I've seen on YouTube, uh, if it is the, the temperature probe not reading correctly, uh, these lights tend to dance back and forth. Um, so I think what this is, is it's probably a power problem, <clears throat> but we're going to take it apart and see if we can see what's wrong and see if we can fix it. We get a screwdriver. It just has a couple of Torx screws in the casing. So it looks like it's just got five screws in the body and then you unscrew this little nose cone in the front. So this is interesting. Originally I thought this was a brushless tool, but this is a brushed motor. Um, and the way you can tell is the number of leads coming off of it. Um, this one, it's got one lead here and then one lead back here, which indicates that it's a brushed motor. Uh, if it was brushless, it would have three leads, potentially four, um, in some kind of special applications. So we'll pull this whole assembly out. So it doesn't look like there's any visible damage <clears throat> or anything that I can see that's gone wrong. So the first thing I'm going to do is strip back this insulation and check to make sure that the motor is good. Um, a lot of these newer tools uh, that are microprocessor controlled, they check a bunch of stuff in the tool uh, to kind of protect you from yourself.
Okay, so what's going on here is uh, my power supply is tripping out because um, it's drawing too much current on the start of my power supply is only good for about two amps. Uh, anytime it draws more than that, it uh, it makes that uh, beeping noise that you heard and then shuts down and then restarts. Um, so I gave it about six and a half or seven volts um, and the motor was just humming, but then when I spun the shaft, it broke free um, and started spinning up by itself. So we're just going to take the battery. Still no good. Uh, I think for definite the brushes inside this motor are about shot just because uh, the motor was humming um, when you first apply power to it. Uh, the microcontroller in here won't allow power to the motor if it detects something else is wrong. Uh, so until we fix that we wouldn't have known that the brushes in the motor uh, might be defective. So we're going to take a closer look at the PCB on this tool and see if we see any shit stains on it, which are components that have blown up or gone out or uh, any visible damage, water ingress or anything like that. So everything looks pretty good. Um, it's pretty dusty, so I'm gonna go blow this off with some air so I can see more clearly what's going on, and I'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. So I blew this off with some compressed air, put it under a microscope to see if I can see what might be going on with it. And I think what's happened at uh, some point in its life, inadvertently, it got some water ingress uh, in the cooling fins of the motor, and I'll try and get this focused. And as you can see, it's got some kind of milky looking uh, corrosion on the board right in through here. I uh, looked up the part number on this and I couldn't find much in the way on Google for Why is my camera not focusing? So I couldn't find in the much in the way uh, for a replacement PCB. I did find one online retailer. They have a replacement PCB for this. It's uh, I think 39 or $40 uh, plus $10 shipping, so I'd be 50 bucks in parts to get this fixed. Uh, in reality, this whole tool I can get today for about $60, $65 online for the complete tool, uh, brand new, without the battery. So I don't think I'm going to fix this because I can feel that the bearings are, uh, they got trash in them, the brushes and the motor are going out, um, so it needs quite a bit of work to get it back going. And I think I'm going to scrap this out in favor of a new tool that I got a couple weeks ago. Um, and this is the 12 volt Max Series Dremel uh, 8220. Um, and this one I picked up for about 60 bucks. Uh, it's reconditioned by Dremel. Uh, got it off the usual suspects off eBay. Um, and this thing, I really like it. I'll, I'll review this in another video, uh, but really, for the money and how often I actually use a Dremel, which isn't very often, 
Um, I just don't see it financially feasible to fix this. And quite frankly, I could go in here and try and replace some of these damaged components that have been water damaged, uh, but it's really not worth my time um, just by the cost of it. I have so much other stuff I need to be doing. Um, I really don't want to invest a few hours into this only to not to be able to repair it. Um, and that's the thing about uh, repairing electronics, especially ones that have been water damaged. You can see typically one or two or three components that have been damaged or blown up, um, but there's a lot of stuff that you can't see. If you get uh, water penetration inside this PCB, and there's, there's multiple layers of this PCB, uh, most of these PCBs are three or four layers thick, um, so you'll have traces in between all those layers, um, and it's so small you generally can't see it with the naked eye. Uh, but if water gets down in there and starts corroding some of those traces, uh, you can replace the damage components, but it still won't work properly. Um, or if it does work, it, it generally won't work for very long before something else goes out on it. Um, so a lot of this stuff, it's with the newer tools um, and the way they're being designed and engineered, they're being engineered as a throwaway item. You use it till it blows up, you throw it out, you go buy a new one. Uh, tools from about 10 or 15 years ago where the cost was substantially higher um, and you can actually get replacement parts at a reasonable cost, it was worthwhile to fix them. Uh, but these new ones are so cheap now, it's just almost easier and, and more time effective uh, to just go out and get a new one. So that's it for this video. Uh, if you got any questions or comments, uh, please post them below and I'll get them answered. Uh, if you got any other suggestions for videos, post that below as well and I'll try and uh, get something put together if it's feasible. Um, other than that, we'll see you next time. Bye.